Welcome to a Think Energy Short, hosted by me, Trevor Freeman. This is a bite-sized episode designed to be a quick summary of a specific topic or idea related to the world of energy. This is meant to round out our collective understanding of the energy sector and will complement our normal guest interview episodes. Thanks for joining and happy listening. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another Think Energy Short. I'm your host, Trevor Freeman. Today, I want to pull apart something pretty fundamental to your relationship with your utility and something that might seem kind of basic on the surface, but there's actually a lot to it. And I'm talking about your bill and how you are billed for electricity in this province, in the province of Ontario. A lot of folks may not pay much attention to their bill other than the total at the bottom, or maybe you also look at the total consumption number, but there are actually several different components to your bill and understanding them will help you understand a little bit more about the electricity sector and how it works and how it's funded. And we'll also take a minute to look at the electricity costs, um, you know, in Ontario compared to other provinces and why there's a difference. Now, there's a lot to go through here. I'm going to do my best to get through it quickly while still explaining everything. But this may be more of a, let's call it a think energy medium instead of a short. There's just a lot of content to get through. So let's dive right in. Now, obviously, we're coming to you from Ottawa here. So we're going to be speaking in the context of Hydro Ottawa. But really what we're talking about is pretty consistent across the province of Ontario. And your bill in Ontario is generally divided into a couple different sections. There are your electricity charges, which could include things like global adjustment. There are delivery charges. There are regulatory charges. And then you'll see HSD, some credits or rebates potentially. Um, and maybe a few other sections, depending on what type of customer you are. So let's take it from the top. First off, your electricity charge. This is the cost of the actual power you consume. You will see this expressed as, you know, cents per kilowatt hours. Um, this is the commodity cost of the electricity of those electrons that you're using in your home or your business to do the things you need to do. In Ontario, most residential customers and a lot of small commercial customers as well are on the Regulated Price Plan, or RPP. The Ontario Energy Board, which is uh, Ontario's independent energy regulator, it's the regulatory body in the province, sets the RPP price for the province based on its forecast of the cost to supply households and small businesses over the next 12 months. So that's a stable, predictable electricity pricing for Ontarians. And new rates generally take effect on November 1st of every year. So you have those rates for typically 12 months and they change each year on November 1st. There are a couple different options for how you're billed for electricity under the RPP, which you might be familiar with. There's time of use pricing, which has a different rate depending on the time of day or the day of the week. So you've got on peak, mid peak or off peak. Um, and those are aligned to uh, encourage customers to use electricity outside of the peak demand times in the province when everybody is trying to use electricity for things at home or for work. Um, and there's the most stress on the grid. The exact times of those periods do change uh, between summer and winter. The next option is tiered pricing. And so this is a fixed price per kilowatt hour up to a certain threshold each month. So you can use a certain amount of electricity at one price. If you go past that threshold, the price goes up. Uh, and that's kind of a, a plan for those who like um, a consistent amount. They don't want to have to worry about what time of day it is, uh, or maybe the, the way they've structured their lives or their businesses is such that they have to use electricity during peak times. So that may make sense for them. The other option is ultra low overnight or ULO pricing. This is really a rate that's focused on uh, primarily electric vehicle owners because it has a very, very low overnight rate. And the idea is that you would charge your electric vehicle. It's a big load uh, in your house or in your business. And you would you move that load to be overnight. You would charge it overnight um, and avoid doing that during the day because in order to make up for that ultra low overnight rate, there's a much higher on peak rate kind of in the late afternoon and evening. Um, so you'd really want to avoid using electricity as much as possible then. The overall goal of, of all these programs, as I said, is to really reduce strain on the grid during those peak times. 
And that will in turn reduce greenhouse gas emissions because our fossil fuel generation in Ontario, that's natural gas generation, is primarily used during peak time. So we call them our peaker plants, and those are turned on when we need to make up that that sort of highest uh, demand load that occurs just a, a, a few times you know, during, during each day and, and indeed during the year. The reason that we're able to do these different rates is that about uh, over a decade ago, Ontario adopted the use of smart meters for electricity, which which accurately measures and tracks electricity usage down to at least the hour, sometimes even more granular than that. And that allows for utilities to really tailor pricing plans around timed consumption. It's worth noting here that if you have signed a contract with an electricity retailer, your electricity charge will be based on the price you agreed to in that contract. So there are retailers out there who will uh, come to you and say, hey, we can guarantee you, you know, this price of electricity and it's not going to change for the life of the contract or, or whatever their terms may be. Uh, and, and maybe that's a better deal for you or maybe that makes more sense for, for your situation. So you can sign on to that you will be charged at that contracted rate rather than the regulated price plan and you won't be subject to the changes of that regulated price plan. Um, you'll be with your retailer. That said, you will still see other charges like delivery charges and regulatory charges, which we will get to in a minute. Before we go there, I do want to quickly talk about commercial customers because that is a slightly different um, structure to the electricity charge section. So in that electricity charge section, there is a line item that is the market cost of electricity, um, and that does change month to month. And in fact, it also changes from customer to customer. Basically, there's a price every hour, and that customer's usage over that month uh, results in a prorated price. And so on their bill, they will see the price that they're paying, the market cost of electricity uh, that they've used in that month. There is also a line item for global adjustment, which is a very unique Ontario charge. Uh, it, to my knowledge, it only exists in Ontario. Um, so let's take a minute to talk about what global adjustment is. There is a certain cost to running the uh, electricity grid in Ontario. And that cost factors in maintenance and planning and conservation programs, as well as long-term fixed contracts. So the system operator signs contracts, with generators to supply electricity at a certain rate. The market price of electricity isn't always enough to make up that full cost. So what we pay, the market rate, isn't enough sometimes. Global adjustment is what makes up the difference. Now, every electricity customer in Ontario pays global adjustment, whether you see it on your bill or not. For residential and small commercial customers that are on the RPP, Global adjustment is built into the rates that I just described above. But for commercial customers, you actually see that as a separate line item. And for most commercial customers, that is a rate that's tied to your consumption. So the more you use, the more global adjustment you pay. There is an option for the largest consumers um, to change that, uh, that equation about how you're paid or how you're charged global adjustment. Uh, but we're not going to get into that in this episode. So that is the electricity portion of your bill. Another quick note here. All the money that you pay to this portion of the bill goes up this upstream, basically, to the generators and the system operators and other players in the system. Your distributor, who actually gives you the bill, so Hydro Ottawa in my case, doesn't actually keep any of this, nor do they set those rates. That is all upstream of us. That is not the distribution company's territory. We just are the ones that provide the bill and collect uh, what you pay. Next section is delivery charges. So delivery charges cover the cost of getting electricity from the generating stations all the way to your home or business. It's essentially the cost of building, maintaining, and operating the vast network of transmission lines and towers, distribution systems like their lines and poles and substations and transformers and all the equipment that's necessary to get electricity to you, to your home or to your business, and also to repair outages. So if there's a storm and lines are down, um, it's the delivery charges that fund the exercise of going out there and repairing that. So if you think of electricity as the product, the delivery charge is the logistics behind that. So it's like the warehouse is in the trucks and the route to get that package to your doorstep. Um, same thing happens with the electricity system. Some of that delivery charge is fixed and it doesn't change month to month when uh, no matter what consumption you have, so how much you're using, 
That's why sometimes you'll hear people say, oh, you know, my my electricity consumption was super low, but my delivery charge didn't change. That That's not fair. Um, and the reality is, is that we still need to maintain that grid. Even if you have a month where you're not using a lot of electricity, you still want those poles and wires and transformers to be there and to be working and ready for you when you are going to use a lot of electricity. There's also a customer service charge within that delivery charge. So that kind of covers the meter reading, the billing, the customer service, the, uh, you know, maintaining that infrastructure is included in there. There's a distribution charge and that that's kind of the, the main portion that Hydro Ottawa keeps as well as that customer service charge. Um, and that is for us to maintain the distribution system. And then there's a transmission charge that is to do the same thing, except for the high voltage transmission system that brings electricity across the province. There is also a line loss adjustment. Now, it's normal for a small amount of electricity to be lost as heat when it travels over power lines. That's just the reality of moving electricity over long distances. And you will see a small adjustment on your bill to account for these line losses to make sure that all the electricity being generated is actually being paid for. And your local distribution utility, again, Hydro Ottawa in my case, collects this money and keeps the portion that's meant for the distribution company and pays the rest to all the various other stakeholders in the system that make up the electricity sector. It's important to know that these delivery rates are reviewed and approved by the Ontario Energy Board based on the specific needs and the priorities of each utility. So this is the, the nature of us being a regulated industry. Our regulator, the Ontario Energy Board, has to approve the rates that we charge. We have to show to the Ontario Energy Board, here is what all of our costs are to maintain the system. Here is what we want to do to grow and expand in order to meet our customer needs. Here are all the programs that we're running. And therefore, here are the rates that we need to charge. And the Ontario Energy Board will actually make a ruling on that to say, yes, those are fair rates, or no, we think you're charging too much, or hey, we actually think you're charging too little. Um, the Ontario Energy Board also wants to make sure that utilities are being responsible and maintaining the grid so that it is um, safe and reliable and affordable for their customers. The next section is regulatory charges. And so that is very simply the cost of having a regulated system of the Ontario Energy Board uh, and having a regulator to oversee and administer the provincial electricity system and ensure that it remains affordable and reliable for everybody. So there is a cost and that is on everyone's electricity bills. So those are the main sections, but there may be other potential charges and rebates on your bill that you'll see. And so these include things like HST. So electricity is subject to HST in Ontario. So you'll see that tax line. Um, most customers that are on the RPP, the regulated price plan, are eligible for the Ontario electricity rebate. And this is a rebate from the provincial government Ontario to help reduce electricity costs, um, primarily targeted at residential, farm, and small business customers. And you will see this on your bill as a pre-tax credit. One last section that you might see if you're a net metered customer, um, and a net metered customer is someone who generates electricity on their home or business and uses some of that electricity, but may also push some back to the grid. So if you're one of those customers, you will uh, sometimes see net meter generation credits. And so this is a credit that you get that can be used to offset the electricity portion of your bill um, based on how much you generate and push back to the grid. So to wrap this all up, let's take a quick look at why are electricity prices different in different areas of Canada? Um, what's the difference? Why are they? Why are we not charged all the same? As we've said before, energy is a provincial jurisdiction. So there are provincial grids and they're usually operated at the provincial level. And, you know, some of the pricing and the structure is set at that provincial level. Different provinces have different generation mixes. And so in some of the sort of cheaper provinces to run, one of the things they have is a lot of hydroelectricity. So these are dams that use the movement of water to generate electricity. Quebec has a lot of hydroelectricity. Manitoba and BC both have a lot of hydroelectricity. And the reason that this results in lower electricity prices is that while there's a high upfront cost to build a dam, to build a generating station based on uh, you know falling water, 
the operating cost is actually extremely low compared to other options. There's not a lot of input. You know, the water is going to do its thing. And once you've got that turbine there and, and the right infrastructure, it's going to generate electricity. And, and so there are costs, but not as much as, um, for example, a nuclear plant or a gas or a coal plant that require a lot of input um, in the form of fuel to make that plant run. So when you look at where some of the cheapest jurisdictions are and most expensive jurisdictions, there's actually a report from Hydro-Quebec that looks at you know, Canadian uh, municipalities, Canadian cities that have the highest and lowest electricity costs. And the four cheapest cities are Montreal, Quebec, Winnipeg, Manitoba, Vancouver, BC, and Ottawa, Ontario. The four most expensive cities, and these are 2023, 2024 numbers, I believe, uh, the most expensive cities are Edmonton, Alberta, Calgary, Alberta, Halifax, Nova Scotia, and Charlottetown, PEI. There are other reasons why different jurisdictions will have different prices. Uh, you know, there are different sort of regulatory charges and costs and environments. There's infrastructure and maintenance costs. So uh, an, an older, more aging grid that has to be renewed and upgraded is going to cost more than something that's gone through that already. If you look at density, also, if you have a very dense population where everyone lives kind of close to each other, it's a lot easier to get electricity to those folks compared to a much more sparsely populated, spread out um, area where there's lots of long runs to get electricity to different municipalities and towns and villages. So lots of um, variables go into the cost of electricity, and it definitely differs from province to province. So that's the bulk of what we wanted to talk about today. I know it's a lot, but it is really important to understand why you're paying what you're paying for electricity and what your money is going to do, uh, especially at a time when we are looking to grow and expand our grid, to modernize our grid, to invest in making sure that the electricity grid can support us decarbonizing our lives, electrifying our lives, and adding more distributed energy resources like solar and storage and, and things like that. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Think Energy Shorts or Think Energy Medium. Um, I hope this breakdown gives you some of that information, and I always appreciate you joining us. I'm Trevor Freeman, and this has been another episode of Think Energy. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Think Energy Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts, and it would be great if you could leave us a review. It really helps to spread the word. As always, we would love to hear from you, whether it's feedback, comments, or an idea for a show or a guest. You can always reach us at thinkenergy at hydroottawa.com.